off. <clears throat> Tina, are you up for kicking it off or would you like me to do that? Thanks for sharing your screen, by the way. I'm all good if you'd like to continue. Cool. So let's see. <clears throat> events. Um, I don't know if these are all in the the notes. Uh, this call is being recorded, and after the meeting, it will be published to YouTube. Just let everyone know. We have some upcoming events um, related to the CI Working Group, KubeCon China. And uh, there's a cross cloud CI intro. And I'm not sure if anyone else is talking. And KubeCon Seattle, um, Andrew from VMware will be giving a talk on CI for new platforms um, with his experience using cross cloud CI. We're also doing a, an intro and a deep dive for how to add new projects um, to cross cloud and trying to hopefully get work with other projects um, for maintenance and be able to add themselves and use the different tools that are part of the project. Um, there's a little bit of movement trying to find, I think that's it on events. Awesome. Can you bring up the slides themselves and then I'll give a quick run through on those. And if Watson has any um, input on the cross code CI, reach out to you. Cool. So, Prometheus um, was one of the new projects that got added. Um, there were some issues with the CI building side and um, and the provisioning deployment that have been resolved, and so that should be going up on production fixes red. And the NA for app deploy badges, if the build stage fails, has gone into place. It's like this, so we skip those. Plan on doing something similar if there's provisioning and other failures. Um, keep doing the minor improvements incrementally for the UX updates. Next slide. So regarding those events mentioned earlier, so adding a new project, the intro, talk in Shanghai will be related to this, be updating. There's actually some documentation out there for adding a new project. Right now it's primarily focused on maintaining how, how does it work within the cross cloud CI project, <clears throat> which could be useful if someone is using all the components. There's parts that are useful if you're only using some of the different software um, and aiming towards projects versus new clouds. And we'll keep adding to that, um, moving towards the Seattle where we plan on having um, more information for clouds, uh, for external projects to be able to contribute, help maintain and add themselves to CI and where that works. Um, Oracle integration work has been in progress. Um, some of it's gone up and is in place. And most of that's being done by the Oracle team. And next slide. Uh, it's part of the Cross Cloud CI project and another project I'm talking about in a bit, and working a lot with the network service mesh 
um, group, and they are using the cross-cloud, the provisioner portion of the cross-cloud CI project for deploying Kubernetes clusters from Circle CI um, and doing some other work with that. So we've been working with them to try to roll those changes back in, any updates, and basically um, share and spread the usage of that project and improve it so that more projects can use it. And it's also being used um, for this other project that we're going to, the CNF uh, comparison project, which is another CNCF project. So some related events uh, that we've been attending that might be interesting for any other folks would be Network Service Mesh, <clears throat> which is now moved to Tuesdays. It was Fridays. It's now Tuesdays, 8 a.m. Pacific. The Kubernetes Conformance Working Group, and and then the upcoming events, KubeCon, uh, China and Seattle, which uh, some of the team will be attending, both of us. And here's a quick overview of uh, CNCFCI for those who haven't seen it, and the dashboard. <clears throat> and the next slide, we can see the projects. Um, status for the build stage. So this is for each one of those projects we build and compile the binaries, make sure they um, work successfully. Or for projects like ONAP, we use, we look at their builds externally and check the artifacts and the results of their builds. The next slide. This is the provisioning stage where we deploy Kubernetes, bootstrap it on all the cloud providers. And the status badge is showing success or failure of that and any testing on Kubernetes that we enable. Next slide. This is the app deploy where we take the artifacts from the build and deploy them with Helm charts to each of those uh, clusters on every cloud provider and then run any end-to-end -end test for each project. And that's a quick overview. Okay, I will, it looks like we have a few more folks that may have joined. Hey, Chris Hodge, and hey, Denver. <clears throat> I'll jump right into the, oh, jump, unless anyone has any questions on the cross cloud CI project, I'll move on and give the overview of the CNF project. Uh, thanks for reposting the slide links and the note links. Feel free to add yourself to the attendee list on the notes. Okay, so CNF project. So <clears throat> this is a another CNCF project, and it's dealing with network functions and trying to provide cloud native versions of network functions that have been traditionally virtualized and running on VMs. Several goals, including comparisons of the cloud native network functions to virtualized network functions. That would be functional type test. There's a lot of groups that are doing um, working in this space, ONAP being one of them that we're doing collaboration with. And we've had a lot of focus on the performance side and specifically what's called data plane network functions. So this would be the ones that are normally pushing packets as quick as possible onto other um, applications and appliances and, and doing performance tests on those. So ideally, what one of our goals is is to make all of the tests, including setting up the entire environment, um, the host that the software runs on, and everything else, as easy to reproduce by someone else as possible. And they can follow the step-by-step -step instructions or possibly just run a script. Um, we're doing a lot of this on packet.net, so it's open for anyone else to replicate. 
trying to replicate it on other places to make sure it's reusable there and document all that. We're also um, trying to create composable network functions. So a lot of the projects they have, uh, or companies, uh, so projects or companies may have network functions that work in a particular use case or in a particular location. And then if you tried to reuse that same code in another place, you may have to do a, a large amount of work because it's tightly coupled where the way that the software is set up and configured and deployed is dependent on the infrastructure environment and a lot of other knowledge. So we're trying to make those more composable so they could be reused for comparison tests that we're doing and hopefully for other people. And the tie in with that would be reference code and these use cases. So these are real world examples that hopefully people can take and say, okay, this is something that I'd like to do and here's a working example of that and go from there. Uh, this repo is under the CNCF org. There's a CNF repo, and there's we have projects and issues and stuff tracked all on there, publicly available. So feel free to check those out. Um, next slide, I'll give you all a, a little bit of overview of some of this. So if you have um, a Kubernetes cluster um, with a, or a, right here, I think I'm showing a, this would be a typical open set cluster. So controllers and compute, you could say this would be two masters and uh, three worker nodes. And this is talking about on packet.net. So you have something like that. For our comparison test, we have a, an external machine that's running um, NFV Bench, which is a Linux Foundation open source project for doing packet generation and sending it to these. So this is the kind of your machine overview of what that could look like. And if we go to slide 20, this would be an example of a use case. So um, where you would take the different network functions and how they could go together. So this one's talking about a CPU use case, which is a customer premises equipment where you have some device at say like a home modem or something tied in providing like TV and audio and other services and it's connecting over the network back to the provider and then it goes through various devices or software. So this shows the a broadband network gateway, some multiplexer that handles the different types of traffic. You may have DHCP, DNS, so those are different things. The split here in this view, the bottom is showing what would be data planes. So those are high performance. And then your DHCP and authentication and DNS are your um, not as high performance. They're still important for functionality, but they're a different layer. And all of these together provide what the end user is wanting is to get to some service that the provider, like maybe that's audio or TV or data, whatever it happens to be. So they could go through all these and ask to push. So if you go on to slide 21, a lot of our current focus, this is a view of, of a single worker node. This could be a worker node uh, in Kubernetes. And what are we doing uh, right now? A lot of the focus and related to CI and how do we test this and validate, be able to replicate is building the stuff for those um, high performance, how do, how do they connect? So we have the someone out on the internet trying to access, or it's maybe the, the different nodes need to go out. We have your packet.net layer. And then we have to create an internal uh, layer two network for the containers to talk on. And then you have your normal um, layer three that uh, Kubernetes is going to be doing most of the talk between the containers and what's newer in the Kubernetes and what the network service mesh, which we mentioned that group earlier is trying to help solve is how do you deal with the layer two stuff in Kubernetes? And you could set up 
VPN tunnels and different things of, of passing it inside of layer three, or you can go outside and try to use CNI plugins. So network service mesh trying to solve it. We are trying to work with what's available now and make it hopefully work with network service mesh in the future or we're continuing to collaborate. So what we're doing here is showing um, a high speed connection between the containers. So VPP is used as a a switch, a virtual switch right there on the edge, and we actually give it direct hardware access to some of the ports. So it's running at the same um, layer with Kubernetes. So Kubernetes has access to the network via Linux kernel networking, your traditional networking inside of the Linux host. And then VPP is actually getting direct hardware access, so we do the high performance. So there's a little bit of work to say, what traffic is going through VPP versus what's going over the regular Kubernetes network um, and making that nice. So we're trying to do a clean setup that allows something like NSM, which provides network as a service endpoint, like other Kubernetes services, to be plugged in later. And this is what we're dealing with with orchestration right now and the testing around this, which makes it a little bit more difficult. The MIF interface is allowing the high performance between the containers. So this is a memory device that's provided as a volume mount between the containers. And that um, allows them to talk um, over what looks like a network interface, but it's it's memory and it makes it very high speed. And this is one of the setups. So that what this is is called chained network functions. So you have them in a layer, uh, in a single chain here. And they could be providing different um, services that are doing stuff with the data packets as it goes through. And you could have something where it maybe pops out and talks to, say, a DNS or some other service or whatever. But this is an overview of it. And there's other use cases where they could be connected in different ways. Something that we're trying to get automated and, and figure out the CI for. If you want to know more, there's the repo issues. Like I said, we also have a chat on the cloud native Slack and, and channel C CNF. And that's it for me. Looks like HH, are you ready to give an update on um, you have conformance working group? Sure, wait, we're, we're presenting. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, so we've been refactoring um, API Snoop from a statically generated site um, into an API so that we can have a React Native front end to do all the fun stuff that uh, that Cross Cloud does with their UI bits, uh, dynamically updating the things. Um, we have a, a prototype right now up for the API. Uh, it's listed there. If you don't mind clicking on it, I'm reluctant to share my screen as far as it functioning. Um, I don't know if you, there's a plugin you can have that'll actually show you uh, this in a in a nice way. Um, as far as it's just JSON data. Um, but there's um, a list of tests um, and how many times they get hit and their endpoints. And um, there's a, um, I forget what the name of the plugin is. Um, but that stuff is now able to be tagged and filtered. Uh, we're working on the, the UI. It's up on, um, grab another URL real quick. It's not typing over here. There we go. Bit of a lag. Uh, 3,000, that turned into a link. Um, and we're having some um, some issues with the, the sunburst loading. Oh, wow, it's loading much quicker now. Um, but trying to um, do the selections, and I suspect we'll be cranking through that today. So if anyone's a reactor, um, would be, love some help with that. Be um, showing, um, these updates with the 
with the tags um, shortly. Like, I think it's tomorrow at the same time, so we're in 20, 23 and a half hours. So if we come to that, and then we're doing our um, presentation uh, on our data analysis for cross-community things um, in Shanghai. So I'll look forward to the end, and we're trying to decide whether we should come to Seattle or not. But that's it for me. Thanks, HH. Do you have a link or a name for the presentation in uh, Shanghai? On China? Yeah, if you scroll down in the in the meeting notes um, mm -hmm. from last agenda, I believe it's under uh, HH. There's the sketch link under discovering untold user stories. We'll see if I can't. For some reason, when, when I'm running Zoom, my machine is unhappy. Is it, Zoom is not the the best. Here's here's my futile attempt to paste that link to the Fuki sketch. I think that is my talk link. Okay, awesome. Um, it's not, we're going to have a uh, uh, four people coming from uh, from the Bay of Plenty area. One is a a Maori lady who's uh, actually has some as fuck a papa back to her 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 uh, her ca her canoe which is not called a canoe here but um, so it'll be neat to have her her present for that and then um, yeah Zach and, and also Devin and Taylor or uh, De Denver is obviously also going to be there. Does anyone want to speak um, next month for the CI working group? That'll be just after the conference. So um, I wouldn't mind okay. trying to show the CI portions of, of API Snoop because it, the, the UI and the other parts are just the data visualization pieces, which we're getting to kind of at the end. Um, most of the interesting stuff is actually happening um, in the generation through the CI stuff within the CNCF. So I might uh, put my hand forward for that. Cool. cool. Does anyone else have anything to talk about before we end this call? Okay, so the next meeting is on the 27th of November. Feel free to invite folks and if you have something, add it to the agenda for next month. Thanks for showing that how to attend. There's a mailing list. CNCFCI channel on Slack. And this is the fourth Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.